And so goes 97 years of history. Good evening. Topping tonight's News 11, the high bridge goes down. After hours of delays and months of planning, the bridge that links St. Paul with West St. Paul is no longer there. News 11's Adley Stevenson has been on the scene all day and has all the details live from Harriet Island. And Yes, thank you, Kevin. Behind me, you can see what is left of the high bridge. Thousands of tons of twisted steel. Most of it's scrap iron now, really. Kind of a pretty sight with the sun setting into the background. A lot of it you can't see because it's at the bottom of the Mississippi River. As you said, we did have a wait here this afternoon. This was scheduled to go off at noon. Instead, it went off at about 4 o'clock, uh, about a four-hour delay. But it was worth the wait. I was standing right here about 500 feet away. And when the explosives did finally go off, they... Uh, carried with them quite a concussion. They really packed quite a wallet. I'd like to show you the bridge from a few different angles now and try and explain how this worked. This is just a few seconds before the explosion. You can see 1,500 tons of steel 100 feet up in the air. All of that took just about uh, 125 pounds of explosives. It looks like the blast went exactly as planned. They would, said it would take five to 10 seconds. But we timed it, and it was only really three and a half seconds for the uh, first span to hit the water. This is a tight shot, and here you'll be able to see how the charges actually cut the bridge apart. There were about 180 charges in 22 locations altogether. They went off at approximately the safe time. That was a span being cut away from the tower. It took about a week to prepare the bridge and put the charges in place. The company that did the work is called Controlled Demolition out of Phoenix, Maryland. And they are really important pioneers in this area. The charges you are seeing here are really very interesting. They are plastic explosives sheathed in copper, and when they go off, the copper is focused on a very small area under tremendous pressure. It's traveling at about 24,000 feet per second, and the shrapnel effect actually cuts the steel rather than blow it apart. So, all in all, a very successful afternoon. Melissa Young was here also milling about in the crowd, and the people she talked to said it was worth the wait. Thousands of people lined walls and fences, gathering to take one last look at the high bridge and wait for its explosive demise. The blast was delayed several hours, giving observers and work crews some final time for reflection. So it's almost kind of insulting to uh, stand here and see the bridge kind of standing uh, alone in its lacy underwear, so to speak. The bridge first opened in 1889, all 2,700 feet of it. In 1904, a tornado ripped the southeast end of the bridge, but it reopened the next year. Ethnic communities like Little Italy sprouted underneath the giant. But rust and age took its toll, forcing the bridge to be closed last July. Community leaders who worked on getting a new bridge now look at this day with sadness. Chucks, I've walked across the thing and ridden a bicycle across it and driven across it. I hated to see anything happen to it, but at the same time, thank God that it didn't fall with people on it, and it could have. Just staring at it up there, it uh, looks a little naked right now, but uh, it's exciting and it's sad. Many others remember the structure like an old friend. I used to take Girl Scouts across there. Go to Cherokee Park for a picnic. Got my little disc camera here, and I hope I can snap several shots of it coming down. Only the hardiest of Highbridge fans were willing to stick it out and wait for the demolition, but there were a few complaints. After all, no one's too anxious to say goodbye to an old friend. Melissa Young, News 11, St. Paul. Well, we had quite a fireworks display, uh, a lot of memories tied up in that bridge, and uh, for it standing here so long, it really came down very quickly and very gracefully. Kevin and Joan? Ed, uh, why the delays today? Four hours, I think. Was it four hours with the delays? Well, first of all, there were never any really guarantees as to when this thing was going to go down. The contractors wanted to keep it all a very private affair, and the city wanted to make it public. So there were some expectations there that weren't necessarily uh, correct. Now, the actual problems that they had were in what's called a pre-burning operation. Before they blow the bridge, they have to weaken the steel. They have to cut chunks out of it, just like you would uh, cut a tree with an axe. And some of that wasn't done correctly, and they had to go back and do some of it again. And then, of course, they also had to check the charges when they are in place. And there the crowds got in the way a little bit. At one point, they couldn't drive back up to the top of the bridge to inspect the charges that were there, and they had to climb up the uh, superstructure, one of the towers, to get to them. So there, there were a combination of reasons, but it really wasn't that bad when you consider the magnitude of the job. 
very quickly, Adelaide, do you know what's going to happen to the 1,500 tons of steel lying at the bottom of the Mississippi River? Well, they've got a big machine here. It's basically a huge jaw, and they're, they're going to fish it out of the river and cut it up and sell it for scrap. Okay, another big job. Thank you very much. Two-mile car trip into a 40-minute marathon. When the delays came, some handled it by giving up, and others preferred to look on the bright oh, side. Great. Good to see all the people out walking around downtown St. Paul. I think it's going to go tomorrow morning about 9 o'clock. <laughs> when everybody's on the way to work. Yeah, I'll be waiting till 9 o'clock, though. I'm into uh, bridge demolition. Well, I'm going to give them to 2 o'clock. And then I'm going home. I'll watch it on your TV network there. <laughs> I'll watch it come down. <laughs> So, Jerry Scoob, that one was for you. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> 97 years, I got an extra three or four hours of